episode 80 of the Hooks in MMA podcast. We've got a huge pay-per-view this weekend, UFC 272, and we were lucky enough to get two guests on the card to join the show. First up, we've got Marina Rodriguez, who's actually a big favorite in this weekend's card, who's fighting out at Santa Catarina, Brazil. She's got an impressive record of 15-1 and one and looking to get that up to 16 wins. Uh, so be sure to tune in to her interview later on in the episode. Next up, we've got Sergey, the polar bear, Spivak. He's fighting out of Moldova. And again, very successful MMA career, sitting at 13-3, and three, facing off against the ex-football player, Greg Hardy. He should be uh, taking him down to the ground and just rubbing him into the mat. So uh, make sure to tune into that interview and cheer him on Saturday night. And then, of course, we're going to be getting ahead of that book. We've got Easy Lines locked and loaded. Some great parlays, great value plays, as always, as we search to get up into that 80% success rate zone. We're going to be touching a bit on the uh, last week's Fight Night card here. So uh, why don't you kick things off, Zoni? Yeah, so so pumped for this weekend. Uh, one of our former Hooks In alum, uh, Mr. Adam Davidson, Mr. Apex, he uh, he sent a nice video just before he jumped on here of Colby Covington um, talking shit like he does best. Uh, some backstories about Jorge Masvidal and Poirier's wife, and uh, it's a fantastic listen if you like to crack, uh, you know, a couple smiles. He starts off basically with uh, I won't say his name because I don't want to fat shame him, but the gentleman that. Uh, you know, is uh, is the commentator on the CFFC card and asks all the questions to start off any uh, media um, scrums. And uh, he, he, as soon as he asked his first question, Colby looked at him and said, uh, before I answer you, fat boy, uh, you're going to have to give me 10, 10 push-ups. And uh, he laughed and then he asked the next question. And then uh, Colby looked back at him again. He's like, no, I'm fucking serious. Uh, let's go tell B, get on, get on your stomach. And so he basically just moved on from any questions that he asked them. Uh, Colby is, you know, an absolutely unique character. And uh, in terms of this weekend, everything's on the line against uh, his hated former friend, Jorge Masvidal, an absolute banger. Even though the, uh, the belt isn't on the line, there's no titles. Uh, there could be the BMF title on on the line here which kind of just adds a little bit to it it's how much is it worth we've talked about that before not too much but in terms of two guys that hate each other so much like these guys the history that they've had together uh, it'd be kind of cool just to throw that in there uh, who is the baddest motherfucker on earth and it's going to be a banger can't wait for that and many other fights on this card that we'll get to Yeah, funny thing, I'm looking at uh, the YouTube comments on that video for Colby right now, and he said so many ridiculous things during that video, and almost every comment is just about the 10 push-ups. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> like, he says so many ridiculous things, so many personal things, and 90% of the comments are still just like, I'm, I'm waiting for John Morgan to do some push-ups. Yeah. So, um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's pretty ridiculous, and uh, but Dana is, is loving this this stuff right now. Absolutely. Uh, it, it does really seem personal um, between these two now, like for real, for real. And uh, um, yeah, it's, I won't get too much into it because we'll get into it with easy lines, of course. But uh, it, there, there's, there's a lot of great fights this weekend. And that one is it's probably the most dramatic one uh, at the very least. So, um, yeah, no, it's, it's going to be fun. Yeah, kind of the uh, theme of this card, it seems, is the gatekeeper versus the up-and-coming prospect. And I think there's a few matches that fit that definition. So can't wait to get ahead of the book with you. I'm seeing you at the cashier Sunday morning, 2 a.m. But before we get there, uh, why don't we touch on last weekend's card? I know we had a couple picks go sideways, a couple picks that Z-Ball's cashed in on as well. But um yeah, let's let's maybe touch on uh, a few of the highlights from last weekend's card. Tony, what do you think of it? Yeah, I mean, you know, from top to bottom, you know, not one of the the most 
you know, impressive cards overall. But obviously, Makachev, we, we, we talked uh, briefly before, um, you know, about Bobby Green, how much weight he had to cut. Um, but Makachev, you know, he took the fight, which is awesome. He knew he was going to win. He's, he imposed his will and, and used, you know, the, the, the strategies that he's learned from Khabib. And the guy's an absolute killer for sure. He's going to be a problem for a long time. He's one of those guys that once he gets the belt, and I do believe he will get it eventually, it's going to be really, really hard to take it from him. Um, yeah, that, he, he impressed me a ton. Um, you know, Dana White came out today and said, uh, we're still booking that Dariush fight. He's got to beat somebody like that in the top five in order to get the belt here and get a chance at it. So um, that's the fight I was looking forward to for a long time. Like I remember we talked when it first got announced late uh, 2021 and uh, the fact that they're rebooking it, love that. Hope Darish could turn it around quick. And uh, there, there is uh, a few other fights I'd like to touch on, but uh, why don't uh, Z or Kranz, you just you know touch on that main event and any other things you saw? Yeah, I mean, uh, just for, for the Islam and, and Bobby Green fight for me, I mean, <clears throat> it's unfortunate <clears throat> that Bobby Green had to take that on such short notice, right? I mean, they did, UFC did what they could in, in, in terms of, you know, putting on a show last minute type of thing. And, and Bobby was, was, was certainly uh, the savior and, and, told, and, you know, much respect to him in terms of stepping up and taking on a, a ridiculous fight such short notice. That's, uh, that's why he's a, he's a, he's just going to be a fan favorite uh, moving forward for for the rest of his career certainly I think but uh, um, yeah it's it was a tough it was a very tough situation to put him in and against such a great guy um, even if he did have the camp I'm not sure he lasts that much longer maybe another round or two right hopefully but I, I think we kind of get the same outcome just not as quickly right if he has kind of a full camp because at the same time islam would have a full camp against them although islam probably wouldn't really change his game up that that much right um he kind of does the same thing to everyone but um but yeah so that's kind of what i thought about that fight in terms and you know hindsight's kind of 2020 should have seen that coming a little bit more that quick finish uh but I, I I just I don't know what can I say I love Bobby Green I mean I, I love that guy uh, he's a great he's a great attitude I think uh, great for the great for the game uh, the fight game so um, yeah I, I was hoping he was going to be able to last a little bit longer but it makes sense that that he just wasn't able to to to, to you know last in there um, you know for more than a round with that type of caliber of fighter who had the full camp to prepare. Um, so, as you know, as, as in terms of uh, and what Zone alluded to there, in terms of the weight, I read a hot headline there on, on Reddit saying he weighed 195 pounds when UFC called him uh, what, 10 days before, I believe it was, something like that. And he went down to 158. So, I 30, whatever that is, almost 30 pounds, 27 pounds. So, um, yeah, no, it's, it's pretty impressive stuff uh, that he was able to do that. Um, but you know, probably, probably affected his performance as well. So that's kind of my, what sticks out to me in terms of that fight or sorry, in terms of, well, yeah, in terms of the card itself and, and then the main, main fight. Yeah, no, I know it's one of those things. Yeah. Bobby lost, but he didn't lose. He think, I think he gained a lot of followers, a lot of respect. And obviously yeah. he got another paycheck 10 days later, or 14 days later than his last one. I mean, yeah, he didn't look good in there, but I think that's also a testament to how good Islam is. And uh, as a fan, you always want to see the best versus the best. So I'm excited to see Makchev keep stepping up in, in competition and quality. And um, he's the real deal, man. Like, can't take anything away from the guy. He's, uh, he's an all-around fighter. Even, like, his striking the first, yeah. what was it, 30, 40 seconds. <laughs> like, he's throwing these heavy kicks and... It's got that heavy, heavy strike um, as well. So, yeah, just look forward to seeing him and, and Dariush get rebooked. And um, maybe that slides over into another late notice fight that is coming up and is actually the co-main this weekend. That's Renato Moicano taking a last-minute fight here um, because of COVID, unfortunately. And kind of weird, right? RDA is going into this weekend as a big dog, and now he gets the late replacement and is now on the favorite side of things. We're going to break this down, of course, in full, but uh, 
might just be a nice segue um, into that. I don't know if you guys had any other things you wanted to touch on before we do, but um, yeah, just teeing that one up because it is another theme, unfortunately, of last minute replacement, and we'll see what the outcome is this time. Yeah, uh, well, Zoni Z, any anything? Before? Yeah, just quickly, I, I know you want to segue, which is it's a perfect time to do so. Just a couple quick things from the card. Um, you know, Terrence McKinney, guy we had on for our uh, our podcast. Uh, you know, this guy's the real deal as well, and he's T Rex. T Rex is going to jump into the top fifteen soon. Um, he's he showed a ton. Uh, Ignacio Bahamondes again with another uh, sweet finish. And uh, Armin Saruki and look, look fantastic. Can't wait to see what's up with him. And uh, Misha Surkinov, man, he uh, he had that choke in, but it, it wasn't good enough. And uh, now it's a time we've all been waiting for. It's easy lines. We're gonna be getting ahead of that book. We're gonna be meeting at the cashier, and we might be buying some new properties with these big parlay wins this weekend. Let's get to eighty percent. Seaballs, kick us off. Thank you very much. And I like that 80% ambitious uh, winning rate there. Um, we're, we'll see if we can get up there. But to recap last week on our burning hot streak we were on going on uh, in 2022 here was put out last week. Unfortunately, we went one and three. Uh, of course, we told you to take Islam, but the over didn't get there clearly. Uh, also had Sirkinov, uh in that tournament fight that just barely missed. I mean, Sirkinov was was uh, uh, winning that fight the entire time pretty much up until Terman just caught him in, in, in that uh in that random uh, uh, armbar, I believe it was. Um, yeah, Sirkinov just, and something doesn't seem quite right there mentally, unfortunately, with the guy. So I hope he can turn it around. I know he can. He sees his skill sets there. But um, yeah, currently for 2022, uh, we're at 14 wins, seven losses, making a 66% win rate. Career record, we're sitting at 162 wins. 102 losses with a 61% winning clip uh, just over almost two years now. We've been running easy lines, about 18 months or so. So uh, we're going to keep it going, continue this grind up to 80%. Now I like it. Uh, we started the year at 70%, but we've upped the goal to 80% now for 20. <laughs> Why not? Um, looking at an amazing and stacked lineup pay-per-view event this weekend. Main event the, this weekend is a very dramatic welterweight matchup with Colby Covington taking on Jorge Masvidal. Covington, a fairly large favorite, coming in at a minus 334 with Masvidal, the underdog, at plus 250. Great story here, as we all know, former training partners that came up together in one of the best MMA gyms in the United States, perhaps the world as well, American top team in Florida. Uh, so certainly we can say with confidence that both of these fighters know each other well. Since that time, they've grown apart, to say the least, as well. Uh, Colby being kicked out of the gym for the drama. He was, well, some would say he was starting, right? So that's a whole whole other gambit there. But the tail of the tape between them in terms of the fight stats, they're both 5'11". Jorge has a two-inch reach advantage. Uh, classic striker versus grappler matchup, of course, here. Colby wrestled his entire life, basically, all through school and, and high levels at the collegiate level as well, I believe. Masvidal, polar opposite, right? Comes up bare-knuckle brawling in the streets of Miami on YouTube with the likes of Kimbo Slice. So uh, we know Masvidal's a badass motherfucker. He even has a big-ass belt to, pr to prove it as well. Uh, he's absolutely uh, in any fight, in any situation. I don't think Colby is going to bring him into any waters. He hasn't necessarily been before. But how long can he really weather that storm is the question. Colby's output, activity, and forward pressure is pretty much second to none. Uh, certainly within this weight division, he's continually chain wrestling all the time, putting guys up against the fence, uh, small annoying punches in the clinch, attempting takedowns, everything there. Colby's takedown success in uh, in the UFC is 46%, which doesn't sound amazing, but it's actually quite good, you know, getting one takedown for every second attempt. But then Masvidal's takedown defense is at 75% himself, which is, which is quite strong overall as well. But, you know, 
there's only a few people that truly know what, what went on during these training sessions they had together, the fighter themselves, of course, uh, and maybe a few other people at American Top Team. Maybe Colby was basically big brothering, you know, Jorge, Jorge all over the place and grappling at ease, or perhaps, you know, Jorge was, Masvidal was stuffing everything uh, most of the time and touching him up. Maybe it was more of a 50-50 thing. Who knows, right? But uh, you can tell in the interviews, Colby's uh, approach is that he truly thinks Masvidal is one of the easier fights in the top 10 of the welterweight di division at this point. He, you know, he doesn't want to face Gilbert Burns. He doesn't want to fight Leon Edwards or, or Vincent Luque. He wants to fight Masvidal. And you can tell that that you know, Masvidal, he's a little pissed off about that. And a pissed off Masvidal is not necessarily a distracted Masvidal like most guys and most fighters, right? It actually focuses him a little bit and he performs much better when he has something to prove and he's the underdog, which he's been continually throughout his career, really. Um, you know, that Darren Till fight coming in there against a you know, much bigger guy, basically, in, in London, I think it was, or somewhere, uh, and, you know, messed him up. Um, ben Askren, people were saying he was going to get out grappled, he was going to get, you know, tossed around, whatever, whatever. We all know how that ended. So, uh, Masvidal at a plus 250 looks pretty juicy to me. Um, that's not to say I'm taking, you know, him to win necessarily. Uh, I am picking Colby to win this fight. Although minus 334 currently on bet 365, that's a little too, uh, too thin value for me at this point. Uh, Masvidal, he really should be a plus 185 or perhaps a 200 at most. So um, if, if you want, um, if, Ma if, Mas if Masvidal wants any chance, uh, he's going to have to go hard at the beginning of the fight. Not let Colby get in, get into a grappling rhythm. Grappling rhythm. Uh, if either either of them gets a finish, though, I don't see it happening right away. Perhaps the end of the third or the fourth round. I'm taking the over 2.5 rounds, minus 225. Very likely Colby wins by decision in this fight, minus 105. That's fair for a unit as well. But to uh, hedge that bet, let's say uh, a Jorge finish plus 375 that looks like entirely worth it on my end i don't see masvidal winning by decision here it's you know crazier things have happened naganu's win by decision but um actually in this case i see it less likely happening right now with masvidal than i did with naganu i actually had a feeling naganu was going to go a decision at least somewhat right here actually, I, I don't think masvidal was going to win by decision at all it's never going to end like that um, he's going to get a finish if he wins, plus 375. Uh, if you're on the Masvidal side, I think that's lovely. Um, yeah, but what do you guys think? What are you guys liking in, in, in the props and the, in the odds here? Yeah, I, um, I'm, I'm going to go with your kind of your, your hedge bet there. I, I just have a, an odd feeling here that, uh, that Masvidal is going to get the finish. Colby's obviously, you know, he's fought Usman twice and, uh, Gave him a good go, and Usman didn't put him away, but uh, the power and uh, and the knockout uh, history of Masvidal and the hate and everything, and uh, I just I feel like Colby's going to fight emotional this fight. I really do. He says he's not, but once it gets down to the nitty-gritty and maybe if things aren't working for him, uh, he might be exposed on the feet, and uh, that's where I'm going. I, not to say that I don't agree with you. Uh, Colby could easily win by decision and i do like the over two and a half or uh, two and a half rounds but i'm gonna go with the hedge bed in in Masvidal by finish and personally i'll be putting some units on that nice yeah no good analysis e liking the over for sure um i think colby's smarter than what we think he is i i don't like any of these guys i don't like their personalities i don't like the stuff they say um but i think colby's like got a I don't know, kind of a hidden IQ and, and he's kind of sharp and yeah. So I, I would think that he should win this by decision, but I wouldn't be surprised if Maz knocks him out third, fourth round. So for that reason, yeah, I kind of like the, the hedge on both. And then um, certainly the over I, I'm, I'm very confident will happen. So it's going to be a close fight. I'm excited for it. Um, yeah, it could go either way. So 
And I think the feeling that you're getting there with Colby, I, I think you're, you're touching on their crons in terms of his IQ. I, I think what it is as well really is like his, his toughness in there. Like you cannot, you cannot discourage this kid in, in the, in the octagon at all. Like it doesn't matter what's happening. He just keeps coming forward. Like it just doesn't stop. And that's something I think we're, uh, or, or people kind of underestimate him of because of his shtick and all that, you know, stuff that he does outside the cage with all his whatever, you know, Trump stuff that he was doing before and all the crazy stuff that he still says right now. Um, I think people kind of underestimate him due to that, right? But as as Zone said, you know, this is a bit of a different fight. These guys were literally roommates for a while. So it's like, it's, it's, and it's a little bit different. There's like videos of them like wrestling in some random fucking whatever small one whatever two bedroom place right like that they were coming up in att so it's a little bit of a different situation when it's like that and, and certainly could be possible colby lets it affect them emotionally uh like on any other fighter matchup could e could ever right because because of the closeness that they had before so um it's it's that it's going to be exciting uh, but leading us into into that the co-main event, which is a, you know, obviously the late replacement, as we said before, kind of uh, uh, leading into this, uh, Moyakanu taking in um, or filling in for the position of Raphael uh, um, Fiziev, right? Uh, I didn't get a chance, obviously didn't get a full chance to to really do a full analysis of this one, of being at such like a late notice fight. But right now, uh, RDA sitting at a minus one seventy on Bet three sixty five. Moyakan who's a, a plus one forty. This is a, a tough one and uh, kind of a theme we're going to take a starting here with this fight and going on with a few other ones where we have kind of, uh, you know, highly touted veteran that's had a lot of great fights and clearly is a great fighter, um, you know, kind of holding on to that top five, top 10 spot or top 15 spot against an up and comer, right? Um, and uh, in this case, it's RDA, obviously the seasoned veteran, Moy Khan, who's stepping in late notice Moyakanu, as we said before you know speaking about kind of before this call his last four fights who have they been, or fight or sorry last four losses were Rafael Fazeev who was about to fight obviously so that was him or his last loss he lost against Korean Zombie Jose Aldo and Brian Ortega he's only lost four times in the last five years and those were those okay losses right so I, I think we can forgive him for all of those losses i think he's learned from them he's he's finishing everyone that he's fighting the last two last two fights um i don't necessarily think he gets a finish in this one because it's a, a last minute notice unfortunately we don't have the props open to us right now as the recording here on wednesday night uh for this particular fight but moya plus 140 I'm liking that. Would I be surprised by RD if RDA proves, hey, I'm still the veteran here. I'm still king of the lions in terms of the top, you know, top five. I'm an amazing gatekeeper at this weight class at lightweight. Um, would not be surprised by that either. But I'm willing to take the ju extra juice. This whatever plus one forty. Let's do it, Moyakanu. He's been more active. He's ready to fight. He's ready to go. RDA, maybe some rain rust. Um, yeah, what are you guys thinking on that one? Same. Thing. Really like that pick. Um, ring rust is a real thing. We've seen it time and time again, especially when you're older in your late 30s. It, we saw one was at the uh, Diaz Lawler fight where Diaz just looked awful. Um, Lawler is not incredible either, but I mean, um, you you just think about all those camps and kind of those mini little um, bursts that you're getting better and better and better. moicano has been doing that and RDA simply hasn't. I did see he was scheduled to fight Islam uh, back in October there, got injured, not really sure the extent of that injury, but it's just another, another thing that I'm sure he's dealing with still uh, because yeah, it, it takes a while to recover and um I don't know. Um, just have a weird feeling, Moicano, and I, I'm liking that plus value. How about you, Zoom? Yeah, this one's tough for me, um, especially being last last minute. Um, I'm going to go with you guys. I like how Moicano looked against uh, Alexander Hernandez. Uh, really nice finish there. And, uh, 
yeah, we talked earlier in the week, like, look at these guys' resumes, obviously, based on the, the time that they've been in the UFC, RDA has been there forever. He's fought everyone. He's a grizzled vet. He finds a way to win. And uh, Moicano, we listed to the people he's lost, um, but he's also got some solid wins behind him too. Uh, changing of the guard, we mention often as well. So based on that, uh, even though I'm contradicting myself with one of the other fights we're going to talk about in a few minutes, um, I'm going to go with Mike Moicano with the the uh, plus money. And, uh, you know, it's 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 a late minute replacement uh uh, Moicano being that guy, but also it's a late minute replacement for RDA. So he hasn't planned or, or trained for him either. So, um, I, I, I like, uh, Moicano coming in on short notice, fresh after his last fight. Uh, whereas, uh, RDA has been out for a while, like you guys mentioned. So Moicano plus money, lock it in. Boom. Love it. And yeah, I mean, uh, Depending on 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 what the prop odds are, I I, I am liking Moicano by decision, I, as we, you know, late replacement. Um, he's I don't think he's gonna be as sharp, right? Be able to really finish. I mean, who finished? I mean, I, has RDA been finished lately? I don't think he it, really has. It um, is a five round fight too. Oh, true, true. I I, I didn't real and, and they're keeping it a five round fight for Moicano as well. Hey, eh? okay. Okay. Um, yeah, that changes things up a little bit. But I'm going to like the over. I'm not going to say this shit decision then, but I, I am going to say over then. Certainly if it's a five-round fight, over 1.5, depending what that is, that's probably going to be like minus 300 or minus 250, right? Over 2.5, um, that will be a little bit more doable at minus 150. Min I'm guessing right here, minus 163, something like that, right? So let, let, let's let take that over as well in that fight. Um, I, I, I think that that's a good one to do. Next up on the list, uh, and I think the fight that uh, that Zone was alluding to here, we have Edson Barbosa taking on the fast up-and-comer Bryce Mitchell undefeated. Uh, another extremely intriguing matchup. Uh, featherweight uh, division here. Bryce is the uh, actually uh, surprising in my opinion, at least. Uh, he's the favorite. Uh, a little too much as well at minus one sixty three. Again, in my opinion, uh, with Barbosa sitting at plus one thirty seven. Another classic grappler versus striker matchup here. Bryce is, is one of two people in the UFC history to get a twister submission. Uh, him and Korean Zombie. This is an extremely Hard submit. I'm not a jujitsu expert by any means. I've only learned this by listening to Dan Hardy and his comments on it. But apparently, this is a very extremely hard submission to get on people. Um, you know, you can't really just, uh, you know, sink it in a randomly go flowing, rolling with people. You really have to kind of set them up into a trap in order to get it. Um, it's not like a guillotine or choke like that. So um, his, his his ground game is 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 um you know second to none basically right of course though we have barbosa who is one of the best kickers in the ufc uh he's so so fast he, despite being 37 years old i believe I, I think right now um is if i remember correctly uh he's still one of the fastest guys in there so uh that's there that's the reason why i think that plus 137 is a, a just surprising to me i get it but who is who is Bryce really faced, right? So I I personally I'm going with the up and comer here again in, in, in this fight. I'm gonna get on Bryce Mitchell. I don't love the 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 value here. Uh, minus 163. Um uh, it's it's you know I'll take it. Uh, I'm gonna parlay it like again like that over in the first in, in the main fight or um you know, some of the other things that we took before, kind of, we were talking. Oh, yeah, sorry, Moyakanu, right? Uh, but, uh, um, yeah, that's kind of what I'm liking here. Bryce Mitchell, money line. Um, yeah, what are you guys thinking for this one? Well, I, well yeah, well, I know I know Zone's kind of got, you know, well, we'll, let, we'll Zone go. Let Zone go first here. You jump in there, Zone. Yeah, I'm willing to bet my entire life that uh, it's worth how much, I don't know what that is, what it's valued at, but. Um, oh, I... Yeah, so low right now, but I'm building my way up. Um, Edson Barbosa, I got him, and I really, really like him uh, by finish. I, th I think it could be a liver kick. Um, the I like the uh, 
the length and the reach of Edson Barboza. And I like that it's in the bigger, uh, the bigger octagon. And yes. I know that Bryce is going to obviously pressure and, and in the past, some very, very tough opponents for, for Edson have pressured him and done pretty well. It just hasn't, Bryce hasn't done that to anybody like of that quality. Like Edson's yeah. fought anyone and everyone at multiple weight classes. He has, you know, stumbled with some, some losses, but the losses are against absolute killers. Um, you know, Bryce's best win. I mean, he's talking about like Charles Rosa and like these absolute bums. Um, and I, th I think his record's inflated. Uh, he lost on the ultimate fighter to, uh, to Brad Katona, Canadian, who's also very good too. But we're, we're talking about Edson Barbosa. Yeah, this isn't that... like, this isn't like Charles Rosa. Like this is an absolutely completely different fighter. I, I like Edson by finish. I really do. And uh, I'm going to be at least betting the money line here. Um, a significant amount of units. <laughs> yeah. I love, uh, I love the significant descriptor. And I think it's a significant advantage in many aspects. Um, I want to call out something we haven't talked about. And that's the gyms that each one of these fight out of. We're looking at Barboza fighting out of American top team one of the most prestigious, reputable, and um, known gyms out there with just Hall of Famers and, and studded casts. We've got Bryson fighting out of Barada MMA. And I click into that and I look at the people there. And basically there's six on Tapology, Bryson's included. Three of them don't have a winning record. The one that does, her name is Danielle, the wife beater Thompson, and is 2-0-1 oh, and, and is an amateur. And then the other one with the winning record is 11-3. and three. Never heard of him, Wayne Johnson. He's lost every fight in the CFFC. And then his only wins are in these no-name organizations. That matters. Who you're training with every day, who's, who you're surrounded by, the different insights you're picking up from the people that surround you, he's not getting it from Kendall the Crocodile Howell, who's 0-2 professionally, or Dakota Damaris, who's 0-1. Like, uh, these guys are just, they got the Chuck Norris picture on their tapology. Like, they're just no buds. So, yes, Mitchell has a bright future. I think he's a great grappler. He'll do well against the Charles Roses, Andre Touchy Feelies of the world. But when you're going up against Barboza's an American top team, I just don't think he stands a chance. And uh, Zoni, let's get it, brother. I can't wait. Yeah. And as um, I think it was Cormier who originally said this, perhaps like there's levels to this game, right? In terms of UFC. So there's, uh, um, yeah, no, I could totally see what you guys are coming from there in terms of the, you know, him, him running into uh, just a guy that's just completely above his level and, and not being there. And yeah, I could be falling in love a little bit too much with the character. He's great on Embedded. And, and then you're exactly right, Kranz. I mean, his, if, you, if you look him on Embedded, he lives in the middle of, I forget where it is, Arkansas, Arkansas. or something like that. Yeah. He lives on a farm and whatever, which is great. And, and you know, I'm, he, he seems like he's going to be relaxed in there. There's no doubt about that. There, You know, I don't think he cares about the betting lines or whatever that he's a favorite either. Uh, you know, I don't think there's going to be much pressure on him in his mind. So I, I think that's good. But as you guys said, uh, uh, Barbosa has faced an immediate or uh, amazing quality of uh, opponents previously, right? And, and I'm starting to lead into... Is this a situation or, or night where you just take every underdog straight up and, and like you just single it out with every underdog and hope two of the five win and you make money? Like what's what's I don't know. Like I'm starting to feel that a little bit because some of these underdogs are juiced up a little bit too much. So um, so maybe that's a maybe that's a thing you kind of look at here, kind of because. Going into our uh, the next fight, I at least want to talk about here is uh, a very interesting welterweight fight. We got Kevin Holland moving down, as I just said, the welterweight, sorry, and uh, uh, Alex Olive taking on Alex Vera. Uh, Alex Oliveira. Kevin, another large favorite, sitting at minus 334. 
Oliveira plus 250. Again, as I said, leading into this, too juiced up. Um, Oliveira is an absolute gangster. Uh, always puts on a crazy fight. Uh, it's very, very, very tough to get him out of there. So now Holland is the type of guy that, uh, you know, uh, we were talking about this a little bit before. Uh, in my opinion, he wasn't really a guy taking all his fights completely seriously. Um, you know, during the fight, if if he didn't crush the guy in the first round, he was kind of like, oh, okay, well, we'll see kind of what happens. Da, 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 da. We'll play around. Um, but now him moving down, I think it shows he's taking things a little bit more seriously perhaps putting more focus in. Uh, I think he's an extremely dangerous, uh, un unorthodox striker, unpredictable. Oliver is a wild card himself, though, loves putting on a show. This has potential to be fight of the night, uh, amazing finish of some sort, I think, coming, or maybe just a ridiculous decision. But I'm going to take Holland by finish, minus 110. I think he puts the wealth to wait division on notice here this was a fight set up by the matchmaker to premiere hall into the division and, and put on a great show uh but possible Oliveira uh upsets that as i said a plus 250 if you want to take a plus 250 with him and, and disagree with me i cannot disagree or i, I can't argue or, or you know put you down for that um at this price as i said though I don't think it happens, but what are you guys thinking? Yeah, I would, I would just, I, I like uh, Hall and money line. Obviously the value is not there. Parlay it with something else. Um, possibly, you know, second or third round finish. I could see that happening too, but I'll just stick with the money line on this one, parlaying it with something else. Yeah, it's a good point, Z, the weight class change. And um, I think it's a fade for me. I'm not, confident in either to be honest if I do I'll sprinkle on Oliveira but yeah I think the Holland does put him away that it's a good analysis it'll be a fun fight to watch don't get me wrong but from a betting perspective I just there's not much value unless you go dog so I just I'm just going to kind of fade it maybe a half unit on Oliveira and get some yeah. popcorn ready and enjoy it yeah. Double double checking there. I since I said maybe a late round finish, uh, third round finish for Holland is a plus one thousand. I'll probably be sprinkling a little bit on that. That's some I, nice value. I uh, like that. that's that's I literally like that. what I was just about to say. Yo, I, I was sorry. Say plus the thousand. No, no, no. That's what I mean. That's amazing, right? No, no. It's good. Like I just thought of that as well. Go half unit, and then you're just yeah. laughing if it happens, right? It's just you're you're setting yourself yeah. up for some live betting later in the night. There you go. Yep. Yeah, like what, like what, I guess, yeah, five bucks, fucking, what is that, 50 bucks, I guess? Yeah, 55, unreal. So, yeah, you're getting 10 to 1 profit. Let's let's ship it. Let's go. Yeah, that's that's pretty solid because, yeah, looking at uh, Oliveira's record here very quickly. Um, it's got a yeah, good be strength four, of schedule. Four in a row. Yeah. 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 That's and the he, scary. He, he, that's the scary. Yeah, but he's fought good finishes names. our first round. Yeah, and that Randy Brown one's so random. Like, I don't know about, like, Randy Brown is just, yeah. <laughs> he, I don't know what to say. Like, it's like he looks good some days, and then, yeah, then horrible other ones. I don't even know what to say. Yeah, what was the him. one? Uh, he had a pretty sick finish. Um, which one was it? The Condit one, I think? Yeah. Uh, Brian Barbera. Or... Condit, but that was a few years ago. He beat Condit. I don't know. Yeah, like he he hasn't done well lately, and he's he's been that gatekeeper, right? Where... I just don't know what he. Yeah, like I've seen him, I know him, but like I I just like he's just he's lukewarm to me. I just don't know what's happening there. So, um, yeah, like anyways, uh, I I think, uh, um, yeah, I think Oliveira gets finished most likely but uh um yeah that's, that's what i got to say about that one i think anything else i'm looking at here no i think that's it for me boys what do Tony you might have some good value plays the one i want to call out it's potentially fight of the night materials that dust dustin jacoby and michelle olex and jaychuk um nice. just two crazy strikers both on some nice little win streaks here and uh it's gonna i believe be the first fight of the night so 
make sure you tune in early for the prelims because that one might be fireworks. Uh, how about you, Zone? You always got some nice hidden value plays on the undercard. Yeah, I only got one, and uh, it's for our folks over in Ukraine. Um, my girl, my Instagram girl, my my girlfriend, she doesn't know it yet, um, really like uh, just the value. Um, plus 170 money line. Marina Moroz, check her out on Instagram. You'll be an Insta fan. And uh, I like uh, I like or her. Or an only fan. Yeah, or an only soon enough to be an only fan, and, and Strickland will be all over um, <laughs> for that. Um, oh. Yeah, no, I, I'm I'm going with her. She's got a lot to fight for. She said she's doing this for her country. Um, so I think that's going to be like a, a kind of a sleeper fight because I think she's going to go to war. <laughs> and um, yeah, I, I like the value at plus one seventy. I mean, Agapov is a good fighter. Um, I just think she's literally going to be fight with everything she has here. And uh, she does definitely have the skill. Um, the, the betting line is what it is for a reason. She, I don't think she's as good as Agapova, but I think there's more to this fight than just the 15 minutes here. Uh, she's fighting for her country. So I'm um, going for that. I'm going for her Instagram and only fans in the future. And uh, that's it. That's all I got for, uh, for undercard. Well, the one thing I wanted to jump in there as well, uh, actually the guests, I, I, I'm surprised I forgot to mention her, our, our, our guests as well. The Another Marina that's fighting, I think uh, they pronounce it the same, but this is more of the uh, Hispanic one, I think, Marina Rodriguez, right? Minus 275. Um, money line, I'm, I'm, not, I'm liking her to win. I'm not loving that value per se. I think her by decision though, minus 105. I think that's good to take, um, you know, the, 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 the gal she's going up against, Yan, uh, Yan uh, Xiaonian, uh, who knows, I probably said that completely wrong, but uh, she, she's a tough one. I don't think Marina is going to be able to get her out of there, but she is going to be able to, to, to pull off the win, the decision win at minus 105. That's the other one I wanted to throw in there, Kranz. Yeah, it's a fantastic fight. Yeah. Love it. Well, enjoy the card this weekend, y'all. We'll catch you next week for episode 81. We got a sleeper fight night next week. Circle that one, uh, March the 12th. Uh, we called it at the first episode of the year as a, a card to highlight. I don't want that to overshadow a big pay-per-view coming up this Saturday, but that one, guys, is going to be really good. So catch us episode 81. Make sure to like, subscribe, share with your friends. And we'll see you at the cashier at 2 a.m. on Sunday. Woohoo! <laughs> Next up on the Hooks in MMA podcast, we're lucky to have on 13 and 3 heavyweight. He's got a big fight coming up on March the 5th. Sergey Polar Bear Spivach. How's it going today, man? I'm good, thank you. No problem. Uh, so, you know, you got this big fight coming up here. Uh, you've had a very successful career um, moving forward. Um, being in the UFC, you know, you, you've had some pretty big wins. Um, and, uh, you know, you're fighting Greg Hardy on March 5th. Uh, how do you feel about that uh, matchup? And uh, how do you think that you will do against uh, Greg Hardy? Uh, I feel good. Uh, I'm coming to in Las Vegas uh... 19 September, I train before now. I have very big training camp and uh, I have very good uh, sparring partners, very big guys. And uh, I know Greg Hardy is very big opponent. He is very strong, very explosive. He is good opponent. He's... And, but I think I'm ready. I'm ready for this fight. Uh, what have you been? Uh, what have you been training um, on mostly in the gym? What have you been working on mostly? Uh, you you need name uh, my opponents? No, just in the gym, like your training. Uh, what? How has training been going? Uh, training uh, going good. Yes. Yeah, so have you yes. been working working on like like stand up, like some takedowns? Uh, it's uh, I don't need to to say because I need to to show in the fight. 
Yeah, yeah, no problem. Uh, but 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 uh, I'm ready for everything. I think uh, stand up fight, wrestling fight, no problem. I'm a universal fighter. Yeah, for sure. And uh, you know, a a win here could uh, you know move you up the rankings. Um, so when it comes to this fight, uh, do you do you just take one fight at a time, and focus on your opponent next? Uh, I don't uh, want to to see next. I need to fight uh, now with Greg Hardy. He's a very good guy. He's a very strong guy, and uh, I need to win. And after I I think about next. Yeah, and uh, do do you uh, think that you'll stay in Vegas and continue to train even after this fight, or will you go back to Moldova? I go back just for uh, rest. Uh, after I think I come back here. I like to train here. It's very good gym. Very good uh, coaches. Very good sparring partners. Uh, I like here to be here. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, what What's your favorite part of uh, Moldova? Uh, favorite what? Favorite. favorite Favorite part of Moldova. Like your favorite place. Uh, uh, favorite place. Uh, I don't know. I don't like, uh, you know, uh, uh, I, I born in Moldova, you know, every place uh, I like. It. I know everything in Moldova. Yeah. Oh, I work in everything. Yeah. What what about your favorite kind of food? What's your favorite kind of food to eat? Ah, uh, food. Yeah. Uh, in in Moldova, name Mamaliga. Mamaliga. Mamaliga with brinza. I don't know if uh, you need to see in uh, Google what is this Moldovan food. I like it. But uh, I like uh, Japanese food, uh, sushi, pizza. I like pasta, Italian food. I like French food. Croissant. Yes. Awesome. Uh, and then, yeah. uh, do you have any any sponsors you wanted to shout out? I don't have sponsor. Well, we got uh, to get, we have to get you some. Yeah, yeah. I need sponsor, but I don't have no sponsor. All right, I'll, I'll work on that for you. Okay. Okay. Thanks so much. It is very good for me. No problem. Yeah. Um. So we really appreciate you coming on. Uh, we wanted to yeah. thank thank you for your time and good luck um, on March fifth against uh, Greg Hardy, uh, Sergey yeah. Spivots. This is Hooks in MMA. Thank you so much. Okay, next time it will be better in yeah. English. No, you're yeah, you're I awesome, love, buddy. You, you good luck with your fight. Okay. Thank you so much. God bless you, my friend. You too.